For more on Mr. Corzine's testimony this week, let's bring in Kelly Sandin, partner at Belongia, Shapiro and Franklin. She has extensive experience as a litigation attorney in both federal and state courts, and she joins us now from our Chicago bureau. Ms. Sandin, welcome to Bottom Line. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, on Tuesday, the CME Group Executive Chairman Terrence Duffy alleged that John Corzine knew more than he's admitted about the transfer of client funds during MF Global's final days. Mr. Corzine did make a point in his testimony today of saying that that is in fact not the case. But that having been said, uh, Mr. Duffy's testimony, what does it do to the narrative of what's happened to MF Global ever since it filed for bankruptcy on October 31st? Well, it absolutely changes the scheme. And, and I think you heard during the hearings the Senate committee saying, wow, this was a bomb. This testimony changes the whole landscape. What did he know? When did he know it? And what was done right before this filing of bankruptcy to precipitate this? And were, in fact, misleading statements given to Congress and the CME leading up to this filing? We did mention at the top that you have extensive ex experience as a litigation attorney in both federal and state courts. Under what scenarios can can client funds be moved from segregated accounts and what assurances are there that customers money will be safe if a firm suddenly finds itself in a death spiral? Well, there's, in this particular circumstance, they were allowed to transfer funds to protect themselves or minimize risk, but they had to put collateral in place. So the value of the collateral had to equate to the money transferred out. It could have been done. It appears it wasn't collateralized. And in terms of protecting the individuals who are now at risk, there are backup mechanisms. There's money and funds available to make them whole. But when you're saying the death spin, sometimes that is out of control. So it's not as easy to just transfer it back these people should eventually be made whole or close to whole, right. but it's going to take a significant period of time. You know, whereas had they had their money in this segregated account at any time, they could have called it back. Right. Now that's not the case. What form might that collateral be in? Would it be U.S. Treasuries? Would it be municipals? What? both either really anything of substantive value that equates to the equivalent of the transfer so bonds are usually what's used and so you're right it could be either but just something to make sure that these customers are protected so that when their money's being used because of a liquidity crisis or the risk was too great and you know at the end of the day they always try to zero out oh, yeah. wins and losses so it, at the end of the day when you reconcile the books the money that's transferred to protect mf global has to then be covered and in this case, that doesn't appear to be done. What legal distinctions can be made from certain phrasing that we've heard during this week's congressional testimony? Mr. Corzine said he didn't direct anyone to, in his words, misuse clients' money. And two other officials said they didn't recall conversations about moving money around and they didn't authorize the transfer of funds. Well, that's them trying to appear to be cooperative, but it's very, uh, it's lovely legal speak. It's the kind of advice that any good lawyer would give their client. Don't pin yourself down and be careful what you say. So Corzine is saying, I made these statements and I didn't expect them to be misinterpreted, but I never directed anyone to break the law. I never directed them to misuse funds. So he's left it where there's wiggle room. So when someone else comes back and says, hey, he made these statements, the reality is he's going to say, wow, they misinterpreted it. I didn't expect them to take that, follow that means to the end. What? So it's. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. In, in 2002, when John Corzine was a U.S. senator, he co-wrote an anti-corporate fraud law. That law says the CEO and chief financial officer of public companies have to personally certify the accuracy of their company's financial statements. If their signatures are on the document, can they be held liable after the fact if information they were unaware of surfaces that challenges the veracity of the financial statement? Sure, absolutely, because they do have an obligation to know and they need to look and they need to review reports and make sure everything matches up before they sign their signature. And you're right, he was involved with this bill. And the thing is, the, the way that he would be able to escape liability in that regard would be that it was such a com complicit scheme, compound where there was fraud and everyone was conspiring to keep him away from this or presenting false information. We don't have any of that here. So he's going to be on the hook because he's certified and you know, 
that during these hearings he's now backed away from signing off and that certification that they've followed all the procedures and they're using safe practices. Right. Uh, Ms. Sandin, we have about a minute left. What does MF Global's bankruptcy say about the need for more manpower and funding for agencies like the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission? Well, I think that is what people are focusing on. Instead of saying, let these industries self-regulate, now the government needs to step up. These agencies need more money so they can actually have teeth in what they prescribe. They can have some enforcement bureaus, and they can actually like tighten the regulation on these companies. Because right now, when there's nobody watching and they're filing reports that turn out to be false, who suffers? The consumers. And lots of those high up executives in their companies have their pockets well lined. They're going to be able to afford terrific legal representation, and farmers that put their money in are out of luck. Kelly Sandin, a partner at Belongia Shapiro and Franklin, joining us from Chicago. Ms. Sandin, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.